Hi there, and welcome to the Silver Screen Show. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're on episode three now. Um, I'm once again joined by Pam and Mo. I'm Abu. Thanks for joining us. Right, let's get straight in. There's been a lot coming out last month. So I think the biggest film of the year so far for me came out this month, Civil War, Captain, Captain America. America. Yep, yes. yep. I haven't got a lot to talk about, so let's just go straight in. <laughs> <laughs> Pam, you can go first. No pressure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think interesting is you haven't watched the previous films or most of them, so you can give us a view from like the outside of how you right. felt like. Whereas we both are you veterans yeah, we know in the Marvel sense. universe. <laughs> so I did watch a um, few of the Marvel, Marvel films, I did, um, but I didn't watch the previous prequels of Captain America. Mm. So um, I think I'll be disagreeing with you guys uh, because I know you guys are all excited about this film. But yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it was okay. It was a good film. It mm. wasn't amazing. So it was okay. I love um, Chris Evans. And then... It's the gun show. <laughs> it's yes, the gun. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, I liked his role a lot. I liked how they brought in all the superheroes together in one film. Mm. And I loved how, like, you know, they team up against each other, Iron Man and Captain America. And, you know, how, like, how the one of them support the government and the other one doesn't and how the drift between them causes them to tear apart. And I think it was a good film. The concept was really good, but I felt it was a bit too long. I guess you guys will agree I with suppose. that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, so, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, that's what I felt. Like, it could have been shorter, the film. Uh, it takes a long time to get to the action sequence. So. I would actually disagree. I thought the pacing was quite upbeat. One scene followed the other quite well. Um, enough. Very I think, smoothly. Yeah. I think the problem, like we mentioned to Batman with is where everyone's jumped in straight away. There's no storyline building, but why are they hating each other? Why are they fighting each other? Yeah. Whereas in this one, I would say the storyline did take a bit long to kick in. The first hour was a bit slow until the That's NATO attack happens. Yes. I think that could have been cut out 10, 15 minutes. I know. But once it yeah. kicks off, it's like, just like... Yeah, once it kicks off. <laughs> it's amazing. I think it was mm -hmm. like, you know, I've been waiting for this for a long time. I think that airport scene pretty much, you know, was the best thing I've probably ever yeah. seen in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in an action sure. film. I'm really? Gonna go that, I'm going to go that high. I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to again disagree. I'm going to say that action scene was completely disposable. And really? you could have done away with it. Uh. It's, it's, <laughs> hear me out. Yeah. It, is, it is for the fans. And yeah. it is a fan service giving is, such an exciting and really funny action sequence yeah. with Ant-Man suddenly becoming big and, <laughs> and all sorts oh, of different so. tactics <laughs> they're doing to uh, get one another. Yeah. But you have to also agree that the whole sequence was without any commitment. You knew no one was going to yeah. get hurt. Everyone was playing with each I other. Think, yeah. I and mean, until the final um, War Patriot, uh, yeah. Iron Patriot, he, uh, War he got War hit. Machine, War Machine. <laughs> when, when, well, he, they yeah. changed their names so often. Yeah. Until <laughs> he got hit, everyone was like, yeah, we we're playing. When he got hit, it was like, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> I think that's what works in this one is the fact the airport scene we all know is just a bit of laugh. They're not really fighting to kill each that's other. That's true, yeah. But the final scene, I think, where it's Iron Man versus, versus Bucky, Captain and um, yeah. that is yeah. intense. That is like, you know, I, they were literally can tell they want to do, you know, hurt each other seriously, each other which is a nice contrast because the airport scene, like I said, it's a bit of fun. Everyone's yeah. saying one-liners, cameos, jokes. You know, one thing that stuck out to me is why didn't they just destroy that jet that they were trying to go to? You know, if they had destroyed the jet instead of fighting each other, the whole sequence would have been, oh, done, in yeah. two minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's they the could have, they, they could have, it. yeah, they could have just <laughs> gone and destroyed the jet. I, I think, scene done, one I minute. Think what, no, I mean, what I didn't like about the film, I think he's a villain. I think he's a bit too Yeah, weak. I thought the villain was a little bit pointless. I think they could have got rid of that villain in general. <laughs> I could have made it work without him. I know, yeah. Like, his plan required a lot of like coincidence. Like, I'm going to hope Iron Man follows them to mm -hmm. the island. Yeah. I'm going to hope, you know, all these things to come together. Yeah. For, for a super villain and a mastermind, it was exactly. a really weirdly and weakly planned yeah. master plan. I, I mean, agree. And it was a bit different in the sense that he knew, I can't fight them, I'm going to break them apart from inside, which is mm -hmm. a nice concept. But mm -hmm. I think... They could have made it. They could have made yeah. it better. Iron Man and yeah. Cameron had enough going on to run that on their own without True. the villain. I think he could have been cut out. Yeah, to be honest, the whole villain was quite redundant. They could have completely done away with the villain and his yeah, subplot. Villain, Weird yeah. subplot. The subplot wasn't. Oh, totally they killed great, all my all my family members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could have one word though about the new guys, Spider Man and Black Panther. Um, what I like about Black Panther is he's like I don't give a you know attitude. Basically, the scene with Fulka is like, hey, I'm, my name's Fulka, I don't feel you met. He's like, I don't care. Bang. <laughs> it's just like, it's refreshing to see a character who isn't just all the jokes and one-liners. He was like, totally different character to see. And I think that is a nice change from the general Marvel heroes. You know, Iron Man. You know, if we had Age of Ultron, they're yeah. all in their house having a dinner party, you know, drinking cocktails and mm -hmm. chilling. Like this, Black Panther's like, totally not that. He's like, you know, he killed my dad. Yeah. I'm going to just go tear it, everyone down and 
attacked. Yeah. So and how good was his whole makeup and suit? It was amazing, right? Yeah. The whole attire moves, was amazing. He moves a lot, considering he's covered in metal. I'm going to say it's very flexible. <laughs> is that really metal? It's vibranium, apparently. It's the whole suit's apparently I think that the metal. fabric is made of vibranium, so it is still some kind of oh, cloth okay. to some extent. So we're really totally geeking out here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't mind us. <laughs> 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 Save me from right. the geeky convo. Right. Yeah. Let's okay. just uh, bring this to an end. Um, free my, my free word of you. I'm gonna, I loved it. I'm going to say worth the hype. Well, but I'm a proper Marvel fanboy, so that's probably yeah. skewed a bit. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest... Um, I should qualify what I say because I thought the whole movie was very well executed. Mm. Um, like I said, the pacing was upbeat. I really enjoyed the final fight. Yes. You, you could feel the emotional punch yeah, it's like coming through. And, mm. and overall, the film delivered in what it intended to do, mm. which is entertainment. Yeah. Right. But nevertheless, um, proof, the, yeah. the, the things we discussed, I thought they, they brought down the film to a good level from a level of greatness. And so I'm going to say good but disposable. Fair enough, fair enough. We're all That's entitled yeah. <laughs> to our so opinion. Yeah, so I'll be yeah. like uh, partially agreeing with you and not agreeing with you at all <laughs> because it's... Of my show. <laughs> <laughs> Overhyped, yet yeah. average. Fair yeah. enough. But I think you know, from your angle, like you said, you haven't seen the yeah. all of them, so you kind of need to know... That's a good point. Yeah. You kind of need to know you the lore. You kind of need to relate to the previous like, ones. You know, yes. Which, like, the Winter Soldier, if you don't see the previous one, you won't really yeah. know why Captain America has that bond and stuff. Speaking but of Winter Soldier, if you compare it to the Winter Soldier, you see it's not as good a film. I think Winter Soldier was better. That was a lot more intense Definitely, and yeah. dramatic and the action scenes are a lot more right. so I'm looking for, visceral. But um, yeah, moving on from one comic book one show. Marvel to another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So um, moving on, X-Men Apocalypse. You saw this yesterday, so it's yes. fresh in your mind. Yes, it's Let's we it. both saw it yesterday. Oh, you both saw it. <laughs> yes, yes. Right, guys, so you got a lot to say, hopefully. So let's go first. Um, I mean, I thought the, um, the film is a tough one because I was really expecting, high, I had high expectations going to the film. More than Civil War? Uh, even more than Civil War because I love the Brian Singer previous films. Yeah. Um, all the films except for number three, which everyone hates, <laughs> is uh, I think they're three amazing. so bad and, that and you have to mm, they kind of resurrected the whole timeline. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, they refer to the third film as being the worst in the film, very cheekily. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they pull in Star Wars reference and yeah. they say third one is always the worst. Yeah, yeah. Th that was really clever. But um, yeah, I mean, X-Men films are the ones that really re kick-started the movie films universe yeah. in, in this recent genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah the so first one was 2000. <laughs> And um, I think um, I think there were a few good points in the film. For example, Storm and Quicksilver were amazing. Quicksilver, Quicksilver yeah. I think Quicksilver will That's agree. That's my favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone I think Quicksilver. everyone's favorite yeah. character yes. is Quicksilver. When, when that Quicksilver scene happened in the yes. mansion, like that, you know, I thought how they're going to top the first one. And yeah. Fair enough, yeah. they did it. First time with water, this time with fire. I yes. think what worked well here is they gave a chance to reboot the characters. So Cyclops, I also like. Because I think Cyclops, was, his character's murdered in the first mm -hmm. Trilogy was very soft. Wolverine pretty much pushed him around. Right? You're the yeah. leader of the X-Men, man. Mm -hmm. Don't be so mm -hmm. weak. But now, you know, they've got a chance to um, bring all these characters in. And I think it's entertaining. Just like Civil War, you know, it's all these people, it's action explosions, you know, Magneto doing his stuff. In that yeah. sense of it, it's a great film to watch. But I think there yeah. are a few... Magneto kind of stole the film, I think. Oh, uh, his, uh, Magneto, I think what yeah. makes him great is his... Character is so like tortured and. Uh, I don't think Abdullah's gonna agree with. That. <laughs> I'm not gonna agree. Well, uh, I thought Mag well yeah. Magneto is one of my he most favorite characters response. because yes. he's just such a complex yes. character yes. and he yes. brings such a realism to the X Men universe that yes. other characters really don't. You can understand why he's evil, like why yes. he does yeah. the things he does. They're wrong, but you can see why, why he was yeah. being bad. Which I think yes. for Apocalypse didn't work. Yes. Like, Apocalypse like I'm evil because I am. I'm like yeah. oh. Again, well, the main <laughs> villain, yeah. again, was a bit pointless. Yeah, he's like, I'm going <laughs> to come alive and destroy the world. Like, why? Yes, well, why? mate, if you're, if you're going to start with the main <laughs> villain, Apocalypse, he's the, he's the weakest character I've seen yeah. in, in a long time. Yes, that's and, true. and please, let's talk about his weird makeup. makeup. <laughs> what, what was that? Seriously, seriously. He, he looks like a, like a perverted stalker. You remember the scene <laughs> where, he's, where he's following Storm very slowly down the staircase? Or the, or the scene where he looks back after he goes into his giant orb mm. to Magneto and just gives a very weird half smile. I, I think it just looks just odd. I don't, know, I don't really know what Apocalypse look like in the comics to be honest so I'm just going to reference. Well fear, any... fearing it, it's someone who is <laughs> so you didn't really like it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> basically yeah. like well, I, think, so, yeah. mm, I think another problem I had is the four horsemen like what did it exactly do? 
Apart That's from true. Magneto. Magneto. Magneto was the only prominent one. Yeah, the other yeah. Yeah. three were just posing. Yeah, they, the they, yeah. they didn't have much to do. Apart from yeah. like five minutes at the end. Storm was okay. I mean, mm. she always looked up to Mystique, yeah, Jennifer yeah. Lawrence. I thought Storm's character was well done, even though well not done. well developed. Well, yeah. not well developed. She yeah. had a small role, but it was good. Yeah, I love the hairdo, man. What a hairdo. I think with the ex horseman scene, it's like it's very like like why are they well, apart from Magneto, you don't really understand why they're gonna suddenly want to destroy the entire world. Yes. And side with this like crazy guy, which is <laughs> a bit weird. And in the end they got beaten in like two seconds. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Very, but, um, yeah. <laughs> coming back to I really love loved the film. Like I watched mm. X Men the previous ones, but then I had a gap in between. So yeah. I watched X Men after a long time. Yeah. Mm. Didn't watch many of the parts in between that were released the uh, past few years. Mm. But I really loved Every moment of it, I thought it was very interesting. Well, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I mean, yeah. yeah. I think where X Men so, works, so you can jump straight into it. Unlike exactly. Civil War, you have to read. You have to wait, yeah. and you have to connect to the previous prequel. Mm. So I mean, this one I enjoyed as I watched it. So I enjoyed. I went yeah. with the flow. And that is I that is really it. kudos yes. to the director because it it is a very complicated plot, and it could have easily been lost on the burden of all the previous films. Yes. But they they flowed it very well. They flowed. Yeah, they flew it well, and then again. Um, my favorite character was uh, Quicksilver. <laughs> yes, so I also Ethan liked. Peters. Um, I also yes. liked um, Nightcrawler. Yeah, Nightcrawler was I pretty cool. Was I love the makeup. He was as very well. cool and young, yeah. wasn't he? He's nice. He was yeah. young. He's you nice comic tell. relief as well. Yes. Yeah. So what I would like to see is um, like when they all went to the mall. You know, Cyclops, Storm. Was it not Storm? Sorry, Cyclops. Who else went? Jean Grey. Right. Yeah. Yes. That was it. And I think in the extended cut, you will see what they got up to in the mall. I think that would be quite fun to see. Right. Using yeah. powers they, do they actually do that? Yeah, yeah, you know, they drive yeah. off and they come back and everything's exploded. Oh no, do you know if they do have an oh, yeah, extended it's, cut? It's cut out. Apparently, yeah. um, that scene was cut. Probably I see. see. Yeah. I see, okay. So you'll see what these guys got to up make it in. You know, a bit of comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it is already a long film. Oh, yeah, yeah. it is so a very so long film. Yeah. These Marvel comics, I mean, they're pretty long, both these yeah. films. I think, but in general, it's a trend nowadays. I don't really like them being too long. It's too hard to. Two and a half hours, yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time. Jennifer Lawrence's character, Mystique, was good. Well done. But then again, she didn't steal the thunder. Yeah, I think. She isn't so, a. She feels forced to yes. be the leader. Like she's Very a, the so. leader character of the X Men. I know. Yeah. She's like going to X Men. We will go fight. I'm like, are you yeah. Katniss in this Hunger Games suddenly again? Like, exactly. Trying <laughs> to lead them into victory. The and other stuff. girl, Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, she had a better character, I think. Us, yeah. yeah. Yes. I was gonna say Sansa came off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Sansa. I was just gonna, gonna say. <laughs> but I think yeah, I think Jean Grey. Yes. She's probably more overall, but obviously the yeah. younger here. So I think yes. eventually. But I think the fact Jennifer Lawrence has the image and she's exactly pretty, they she's kind of want to force her onto yeah, the. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But that felt a bit forced. I think they could have probably put someone yeah. else yeah. in charge of the whole thing. But anyway, um, let's cut this to an end. Uh, I'll start off this time. I'll say can be improved because it was great. But I think, like you said, the villain was a bit weak. His, yeah. his, yeah. his reason winning was a bit weak. Yeah. The horseman <laughs> was a bit weak as well. But I liked the whole vibe itself because it was just fun to watch. Yeah. Until I really looked at it critically, I found this flaws. When I yeah. first watched it, wow. Amazing. Yeah, so, I know. But it's yeah. our job to find this little <laughs> critique yeah. it. So. so, yeah, like you said, it was fun to watch. My three word review would be a fantastic popcorn film. Yeah, it's just a popcorn film. You can just watch yeah, it, you know, you it just can float. just have your popcorn and yeah. just enjoy it. Sit back and watch it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, for me, uh, I would say that the film was really weighed down by its own importance. It, 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 thought, it thought too much of it and it tried to do <laughs> a lot. and especially Apocalypse being one of the main villains in the whole Marvel Universe, not only X-Men. Mm. They, they tried to do too much with him in one, one yeah, movie. Rather than and build him up across yeah. the films. Yeah. And, and you can see the epitome of the disaster it is in his makeup, which, <laughs> well, which we, is okay. why my three-word review is, what is that, really? What is, <laughs> 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 review of that in general. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Fair enough. He doesn't like Apocalypse, basically. We get well, it. Apocalypse is one of my, Apocalypse is one of my favorite like characters from the movie universe, yeah. but <laughs> he's just It is what it is. Yeah. Right, um, final review of the month. Um, something to different, yeah, two superhero films. Bad Neighbors 2. I loved it. Oh. <laughs> so, um, this is, you know, your usual Seth Gunn kind of thing. If you watch the sequel, so I um, I've actually seen the first one. I think you have. Yes, I did. Yeah. So, what do you say, how would you compare it? So the first one was about a boy's fraternity, and this one was about a uh, girl sorority. So <laughs> <laughs> wow, they really mix it up there. Yeah. <laughs> creative, a lot so of creative influences. The humor influences. and the comic timing and the comedy is pretty much the same as it's the It's still usual one. Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. We're not going to go into detail yes. of what they talk about, yes. but if you know Seth Rogen, you know exactly. the type of jokes yeah. that happen. Yeah. So I mean, the comedy timings and everything they mm. kind of match the previous one, mm. but then again, like it's different because. Um, this one is like 
Zac Efron, his character Teddy, hmm. he's in between. Uh, like you have a midlife crisis. And Ex <laughs> yeah, <he's laughs> really well, yeah. quarter life crisis, quarter -life you have to say. Crisis. So he's not, be because in the first one, he hmm. was um, he was termed to be a youngster. Yeah. So in here, like the youngsters are not calling him a youngster they're anymore. They're calling him a granddad. So, like, yeah. so he's between the like uh, two generations, so yeah. old people and young people. Yeah, they're not old. So he tries to get. <laughs> so he, this whole comedy is about how he. He was supporting the young people at the beginning, to feel and young then again. he switches side, yeah. yeah, to feel young again, and then he switches side, goes to the old people, mm. and how you know they, the whole fight and everything happens between mm. two generations, like same I, kind of comedy. I think so what I we like, experience a lot in our lives. Yeah, <laughs> so I think what I liked about the film is um, Teddy's character arc, because in the beginning he's clearly resenting that he's, you know, he's all his mates have grown up and exactly. they're doing their own things, they're doing their and own he feels things. lost. Yeah, mm. and he's yeah. very like in the grown-up world, he's very. Um, lost but yes. eventually sees character development because trust becomes an adult and you know try and live on his own yes and that looked that was kind of nice and that was nice among all his comedy and all his humor. i know it had a good storyline yeah i think it. that yes. that watching him develop as a character was pretty yes fulfilling to see among all the things yeah. but i'm you know, got anything to you um i mean i thought it was a really well executed film mm -hmm. this film wasn't really going too much going for too much. <laughs> it, it knew where, what its Probably, audience was like. Yeah, exactly. It was well played. It was very playful. It was lighthearted. The mm. jokes, even though were slapstick, and they're sometimes very difficult to pull off slapstick mm. jokes, they were well on the yeah. point. Um, I think one joke that really got me like laughing is the one where one? he's teaching Teddy how to cook Seth Rogen, and he's like, we boil the egg, and it becomes hard. And then he's like, why does it become hard for? And he's like, I don't know. Then Teddy's like, but you boil pasta, and that goes soft. Uh -huh. And they're both like, Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Important yeah. questions of life. Yeah, <laughs> Why does a pasta go so? I know. You, know, yeah. you, don't, you wouldn't think of a joke like that in a film like that. The humor was added, yeah. like uh, correctly added. Mm. Yes. The one thing I didn't like about the film is the sorority. I think they kind of came off a bit unlikable. Negative, right? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning they were fun, but at yes. the end I was like, I wish you guys just the police came and arrested you. I know. Free in jail. You don't feel sympathy towards them. Yeah, I think <laughs> eventually I think I'm, siding, I'm siding with the girls, like you know, these yeah. kids to get shot. Because we are very close. We we belong to the young group. Yeah. So I mean, being a young. <laughs> young, being young people ourselves, yeah. we don't support them. That kind, those kinds of activities <laughs> that they're doing. Oh, no, yeah. We do not endorse no. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this being a simplistic film, they needed a sort of villain. That's yeah, why I, I suppose it was a villain. Yeah, but so um, let's wrap this one up. I'm just gonna say it's a standard Rogan comedy. You get what if you know what he does, you're gonna get it. Right. You know, he won't disappoint you. If you like it, you'll like it. You know, it's a good film. It's yeah, something you to a watch. Good pastime, yeah. Exactly, something to kill something. I'm going to say it's um, amusingly socially aware because it does give a social... Amusingly, wow. That, yeah. that is, that's yeah. pretty it's deep. Amusing. Yeah, that is pretty it's deep. It's a social awareness message, it Almost does. Philosophical. <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> the deepest review so far came from <laughs> that Seth Rogen. That was true. <laughs> that yeah. was true. Unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean... Um, Granted, this film didn't really have the best cinematography or the oh, best of we're acting. We're not watching it for yeah, a exactly. Oscar review. That's, <laughs> that's my point. This, yeah. this film knew what it wanted to do and exactly. it executed it very well. Mm. And um, I think for that reason, you get your money's worth. And I'll say good light humor. That's, yeah. that's my verdict it, it, for this film. It is what it, it is. is. You know? It is yeah. what it is, yeah. Right. Um, I think before we move on to the previous section, there's a few other films I think I'll have a quick word about. I saw The Jungle Book that came out last right. month. Back end of last month, so I couldn't really fit it into this yeah. show. Yeah. But I want to drop in a quick word for that film because I, I think it's amazing. I, I haven't watched it. I really yet. love that film. I mean, mm. I've watched it as well. I've seen it, yeah. it was it was a blast to the oh, past. Yeah, it yeah, was exactly. just amazing. Oh. Because I grew up watching the, the Jungle Book, yeah, yeah the animated, series, animated series. Yeah, animated and series. I think what was crazy is the kid was only 11 years old and he had to act he in front of a green screen so well. all yeah. the entire Man, film. He acts better than uh, all the other three films I combined. I saw like the behind the scenes, just him on his own acting with like these dolls and stuff in front right. of a green yeah. screen the entire film so that's tough yeah. I mean, even grown-ups can't really act in front of a green screen some, yeah. act, some yeah, actor yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy had to do it as an 11 year old which i really loved and i feel if i give a quick review for it i would say nostalgia done right because you know when the bare necessities kick in they're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it takes me back <laughs> to the days um i think one last thing i want to add is a bit of bollywood vibe to this because yeah. You know, yeah represent I think we need it. <laughs> we go, need go, for it. go for it yeah. there's a shower account from which you watch yes i did so i think you can even give a quick so the fan, it's not a typical, so the name of the film is The Fan <laughs> by Shah Rukh Khan. It was very um, hyped film, like, um, and it um, did reach the expectations, I would say, acting was because he acted really well, Shah Rukh Khan, and it's not a typical Bollywood film. It's yeah, so not it like... a quick review, if you can, yeah, like 10, 10, in a quick few in a, Yeah, so it's really good because um, his acting was amazing, mm -hmm. but the story was predictable, mm -hmm. so the story, like, was a letdown. 
and um, Shah Rukh Khan is doing his typical obsessive <laughs> role. Like, <laughs> why is um, he plays a young version? So he he plays a double role in the okay. film. So he plays the superstar, which he is in real life. Yeah, his Must name be is Arvind Khan. One, I know. <laughs> and then he plays a fan of the superstar, an obsessive fan. Talk about so, narcissism. Uh, I know. <laughs> so he's playing. I love myself so, so much. Let me play a fan. Let me adore myself. myself. <laughs> both himself and he's the obsessive fan is just obsessed about the superstar so it's quite funny and ironical at the same time and then I today I just watched a clip uh, randomly on YouTube and it shows that how he spent hours after hours five hours each day to have prosthetics done to make him look uh, like he's 50 years old he's probably has five hours oh, every wow. day yeah, <laughs> to be honest say that. he needs the makeup every I've, day I've seen the trailer so I haven't seen the film so is it really prosthetics and it not CGI it's a mixture of prosthetics and v VFX so it's both combined yeah. together oh, I see. so to make a 50 year old man look like a 20 year old guy fair enough so, and I yeah. suppose and I think they pulled it off really well 50 is the new 20 yes. anyway so, it, so. It, that's why I said it's not a typical Bollywood yeah exactly that's the problem with them dancing yeah, the mountains in Himalayas yeah. for some weird random reason and, you know, yeah so oh. they had oh, Hollywood's of course. makeup typical artist Hollywood. yeah they have Hollywood's makeup artist Greg okay. Cannon who's done the uh, like prosthetics for yeah. him so it looks really real oh great yeah. so that's, mm. good. that's yeah. a little Bollywood section done <laughs> we'll grow and grow soon <laughs> yes we will right to, just to finish off the show quickly we'll just run through the films coming out next month um, I look through it they're quite nicely spaced up actually yes. every week you've got a film of interest so I know. Yeah. first up the nice guys oh Ryan Gosling right <laughs> <laughs> well, she's gonna watch it Every girl's favourite and every man's favourite as well. He's I think. cool. Yeah. He's cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, especially in Drive. He's awesome. Yeah. And um, I well, like every girl Young from book. yeah, every girl from Notebook, yeah. every man for Drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's so, got the whole audience. Yeah. So this basically yeah. him and Russell Crowe. They play two detectives back yes. in the seventies. So it's got the whole seventies vibe. Yes. So if like Anchorman, that kind of setting mm -hmm. is sitting. It's them. It's a comedy kind of cop, buddy cop yeah. film. Yeah. They go free. So that looks really interesting. I think I'm gonna definitely check that one out. Me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um week following that you got another Studio Ghibli film coming out I'm not sure if you guys are very I'm a big fan yeah Studio Ghibli well animation. I've seen quite a few exactly so you got, and when Marnie was it. here yes, so yes 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 that looks on it. any Studio Ghibli film usually comes yeah. out usually give it a watch because I think they're really they're not just beautifully done the messages in the film messages it looks a little bit like Tangled to me no, uh, Disney's yeah <laughs> but I mean yeah I'll definitely watch yeah that. I think that is something I'm going to definitely try and check yes. out on my unlimited pass mm. <laughs> drop that in there <laughs> <laughs> um Week after The Conjuring Two, oh, I'll be honest. Yeah. The only reason I'm mentioning this I is because my hometown is in the name of the film. So I'm like, oh. I was like looking through cinema, like the Enfield case. I'm like, Enfield. <laughs> why, why are we on the? <laughs> so for that alone, I'm probably gonna watch it. Um, I've I watched the prequel, so I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna lie. I'm not seeing the first it. film. Oh, I did. So, I think the first was okay. It's scary. Yeah. Does, it, does it deserve a sequel? It wasn't. For me, it was. Okay, it wasn't scary, but I think it deserves a sequel. Does this seem like a cash in to you? I don't think the story really follows, but. You can do a film. You, you've got five of paranormal yeah. activity. Yeah. <laughs> so like seven horror movie. Exactly. You can do yeah. as many yeah. sequels as you want. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> and finally, to end of the month, I think the big blockbuster of the summer, Independence, Independence Day. Independence Day, too. Long awaited, yeah. long, long awaited sequel. What did that come out? <laughs> Late. I can't remember. 95. 95? Yeah. Wow. I think so. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, it doesn't star Will Smith, actually, which I'm a bit disappointed about. I think he had contracting issues or he was clashing with another film. Could be Suicide oh, Squad. Really? I'm, I'm not too sure on that. But Jeff Goldblum's in it. We mm -hmm. love him. Mm -hmm. So, and it's got Liam Hemsworth in it. Yes. Not as good as Chris. Very good cast. <laughs> <laughs> Discount. Yeah. I, I'm, are you feeling it? Like, do you think? I'm not really feeling this. I'm not thinking Independence Day. Does it really need a sequel? Like, after all this time? Yeah. I'm gonna watch it regardless. We have I, I mean, to watch uh, to find out. Yeah. The, the, the CGI yeah. looks amazing. Yeah. You know when the huge ship crashes down to Earth, you can tell the. There's one thing Hollywood can do: blow things up. It, it really is. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna do that yeah. quite well now. So yeah. Do you know who's directing this? Yes, I do. Roland Emmerich. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> he, this guy is always going for the disaster films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he 2012 and yeah, all the... Um, 2012 was good. Yeah, but that was him, man. <laughs> yeah. well, originally independent. I thought the year was okay, but the movie, not so much. Don't mm. worry, I've done my research. I've got the directors all written here. I want to look intellectual here. Yeah. This isn't just for design. <laughs> but yeah, um, that wraps it up. July or June should be fun. And um, we'll look forward to reviewing all those soon. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining Thank us, everyone. You. And see you next month. Thank you. And that's a wrap. Thanks.